Actor Zaira Wasim has been trending on Twitter for two days non-stop after announcing her decision to leave films because she felt it conflicted with her religion. In a social media post over the weekend, the Dangal star, who's just 18 years old, said that for a very long time now, it's felt like I've struggled to become someone else, that as I just started to explore and make sense of the things uh, to which I dedicated my time, effort and emotion, it was only uh, for me to realize that though I may uh, fit here perfectly, I do not belong here. This field, she said, brought a lot of love, support and applause, but what it also did was lead me to a path of ignorance and I transitioned out of my faith while continuing to work in an environment that constant, constantly interfered with my faith, my relationship with my religion, she said, was threatened. Now, her post has sparked off a furious debate. Many say, of course, that this is her personal choice and people shouldn't presume that she came under any kind of pressure to say that she should be left alone and, and really not even debated at all. Others, however, have asked whether this was actually her choice, given the patriarchal society we live in, where women more than others do come under tremendous pressure. Well, among others, tonight we're joined by Lalita Kumaramangalam of the BJP, also former chairperson of the National Commission for Women. We have writer and columnist Anil Dharkar joining us tonight from Mumbai. Sadia Delvi and Edvaita Kala will be joining us shortly. Uh, Anil Dharkar, let me just ask you straight off, where do you stand, you know, on this entire debate for two days now? People have been obsessing, uh, you know, uh, uh, about Zaira's decision, which is her decision. Uh, but I have to ask straight off. Do you think we would be having this debate, uh, you know, especially on social media, if if the person concerned had been of a different religion? Absolutely. And this is what I said in my tweet. Uh, and this is what I've been saying since that here's an 18 year old who's not able to cope with with the film world. It's a very, very difficult world. And, you know, in, in the statement, she said for five years, it felt like I have struggled to become someone else. Now, you can sympathize with that. There, there have been seasoned actors and actresses all over the world who have given up acting at the height of their fame. And here is someone who starts at 13. Five years later, she finds that it's just too much for her. Uh, maybe her, her outlet here was her faith, her religion. It could have been something else. It could have been marriage. It could have been uh, going into a field of study. It could have been anything. Uh, and I think we should leave her alone. Uh, this whole thing would not have happened if she had not been Muslim. I can say that for sure. And if you look at the comments that have come on uh, uh, Twitter, they all harp on this point. The ones who are against it keep harping on the fact that she is Muslim. That is Islam which has done this to her. Now, I can understand that question coming up she, if she was coerced into it. But obviously, she has not been coerced into it. This is her own decision. Uh, whether we agree with it or not, if at that age, would I have given up everything and gone into religion? I wouldn't have. But that's her religion. That's, I mean, that's her decision. Who are we to question it? I want to as take, simple as that. I want to take that to Lalita Kumaramangalam. Uh, you know, very honestly, whether Ms. Kumaramangalam, uh, as I asked straight off to Anil yeah. Dharkar, would we be even discussing this and, ha you know, be, people be so interested if, if she wasn't a Muslim? Uh, and, and, you know, is that playing into some of the kind of discussions we are seeing online? And secondly, are we, are we presuming? Uh, are we also uh, perhaps, um, you, know, you know, being presumptuous that she came under pressure? Uh, it's kind of patronizing to suggest that as well. How do we know that this wasn't her own decision? Uh, Nidhi, let me say that um, I think this is her own life, her own personal life. It's hers to do what she wants to do. But having said that, let me also say that I wish that she hadn't herself brought her religion into it. Now, I don't think it's fair of people to comment on her being uh, belonging to a particular reason and to say that's the reason why she left. But unfortunately, she has herself mentioned it in her tweet. Personally, I would say it's her decision. She has the right to make whatever decision she wants to make with regard to a career she wants to or doesn't want to follow. And perhaps she did have depression, as um, Mr. Dharka said, that uh, she wasn't able to cope with it. Perhaps she didn't get the support she needed from either within the industry and without. Uh, but having said that, the problem is that I wish she really hadn't herself brought her religion into this whole uh, debate or discussion. And uh, well, as an individual, every individual has the right to choose what they want to do in their life. 
if she chooses to leave the film industry, it's her choice. Uh, others may not have done it, but then everybody doesn't have to do the same thing in life and have to believe in the same things in life. Luckily, we belong to a democracy and she's 18 years old. She has every right to make up her own mind as to what path she wants to follow. Well, so, well, you know, uh, you we will miss an extraordinarily talented actress. No, absolutely. But that's her decision. Uh, you, you raised an interesting point, Sa and I'll take that to Sadia Delvi, because Sadia, that is what Sa you know, many others have also said in the course of the last 48 hours, which is that while they do respect her decision and, and believe that it is her decision, they feel that it was unfair for her to bring, to, to link it to religion, because it kind of, you know, uh, sends out a message to, you know, others from other young women from her religion that what you know, somehow what they're doing it doesn't sort of uh, comply with their faith and that, that's an unfair position to put others in. Uh, what would you say, Sadia? Well, first of all, again, I think everybody is very correct in saying that there's a very young girl and we need to respect her choice. Obviously, it's a very clear choice that she's made. And even if she's put faith as, you know, if she's, she wants to put faith as maybe as something that she really believes that is, you know, it is motivating her spiritual quest, we need to respect that too. I don't think we really, you know, it's fair to go on to a debate of whether it was right to put her faith in it or not put her faith in it. I mean, you know, um, faith is something very personal and everybody expresses itself um, individually. There are many women who think, um, you know, hijab is uh, necessary. A lot of women don't feel that hijab is uh, necessary to be a good Muslim. Similarly, there's a debate on music, whether music, but and yet you have some of the, you know, a lot of, there is a school of thought that says music is not uh, permissible in Islam. So, but yet you have in the Indian film industry, uh, you know, history of um, some of the best mu musicians who are Muslim. So, similarly, uh, you know, there are guidelines for um, modesty and uh, you mi Sadia, she might be finding that a conflict. Can I ask and, you? But it's again how you choose to interpret sure, it, how you choose to. So one of and the she arguments has the family support. No, uh, Sadia, I'm just sure to, her just parents are, you know, guiding no, no, sure. her, counselling her. But just, just to be the devil's advocate here and, and uh, you know, to ask you this, that uh, the fact is that uh, one of the questions many people have raised is that, uh, you know, how much, you know, free will does she actually have? I mean, uh, uh, is she really exercising her right to choose? Because, I mean, Taslima Nasreen has made this point repeatedly on social media in the last 24 hours that women are often, uh, you know, it's, it's very patriarchal. It's, they're kind of brainwashed since their well, childhood. Taslima Nasreen is a bit of an Islamophobe, you know. Yeah, exactly. So but I'm, just, I'm giving her example because she's sort of hammered on this repeatedly. But, you know, that, that women are brainwashed into thinking that yeah. this, this is the right choice that they are making. I think that's a very mean thing to do. I don't okay. think so. I think, <coughs> is, I think she's a, um, you know, she may wants to make a career move, and I'm sure, you know, she's an enlightened young girl, talented girl, uh, been given a good education, and I'm very sure her parents are around her, her family has supported her, whether it's her acting or whether it's her decision to quit. I really think that this is a, a, a question of uh, free will. And we should not put so much pressure or be, you know, debating it to a time is where it can actually harm mm -hmm. her. She's okay, she's chosen to put out her reasons and we really need to respect that too. And not okay. go into okay. a thing that, you know, is it anti-Islam or people are forcing her or... Clearly, I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case at all. Adveta, it's some soul Adveta. searching. Maybe, you know, I mean, sure. there are actors uh, like Vinod Khanna who went off into an ashram at the peak of their career. So it's okay. In She's fact, doing some spiritual soul, Adveta, soul searching. Adveta and Kala sure is joining us. success at whatever and, she know, does. Adveta, in fact, you... Um, you, uh, I, I just wanted to read out to you uh, one of these uh, tweets that Milind Diora had put out saying that, you know, you suddenly have people lecturing on Zaira uh, and I have Hindu and Jain friends right here in South Bombay who've renounced their cushy careers for their gurus and their faith. You can choose whether religion determines your career or your love life and unless there are minors, then let them decide for themselves. Advaita, how do you see this debate? Uh, you know, I, I do think it's a personal choice. I, I have no I have no point to pick with that. I think, uh, but the thing is that she, she was a child actor. I think we forget that. You know, she was only about 14 or 15 when she acted in Even her younger, first yeah. film. And it's a process of coming of age. You know, when you come of age, 
uh, maybe younger, you're right. And uh, when you come of age in the public glare, when you come of age, you've already won your national award even before you're 17, 18 years old. Uh, there's a lot of pressure and she was embraced by the mainstream, certainly. And, uh, you know, the fact that she's figuring out who she is, uh, why her faith drives us, uh, what it means to her at this point of time and what sacrifices she feels to, she needs to make for it are her choices. Uh, the only thing problematic is that, uh, you know, if one, as someone who has observed her career in the past couple of years and seen the commentary that has surrounded her, her existence in the mainstream of entertainment, uh, there was this trolling that went on which, uh, you know, called her choice of being in films as un-Islamic. Uh, remember, this is a state. Kashmir yeah. where cinema halls are considered un-Islamic. So there was that pressure and then there was the other pressure also wherein you know the mainstream acceptance that she was a role model of sorts and she withdrew from that immediately and said I'm no role model uh, because she received backlash from you know people who have a separatist sort of idea of, in, of you know of Kashmir and didn't really like that kind of mainstream acceptance uh, that she was gaining and uh, you know being a, another face of Kashmir in, a, in, in something as popular as Bollywood so I think there were a lot of pressures for a young girl. So uh, sitting here, of course, one, ca one cannot speculate on why she's made this decision. There were all kinds of stories. On another channel, I was seeing a, a reporter in Srinagar saying her family has faced some sort of social ostracization also because of her association with films. Uh, so, you know, there are all this sort of conjecture out there. Uh, remember that uh, rock band in Kashmir, All Girl Rock Band disbanded. So we've seen a precedent and uh, one can only hope that this is something that she really really wants to do and wish her well and maybe when she's 22 she's still very young she may want to come back who knows well you know just to say that many of those voices that spoke on spoke out for instance against yeah. the girl band or, or even those yeah, who talked back, about Zaira frankly are sort of the the, the extreme radical uh, uh, you know elements and I, I you know that's really not how regular folks uh, in Kashmir would be looking at this, but uh, uh, Sadia wanted to come in, uh, you know, on that point. No, I uh, want to come in. Okay, I've been sorry, trying to Anil come Dharkar in. Sorry, Anil Dharkar first. Anil Dharkar first. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Dharkar. Uh, let's, not, uh, let's not forget uh, to start with that Bollywood has, uh, the reigning deities of Bollywood have been Muslim. Uh, so, you know, this thing about Islam against cinema, against entertainment is a completely irrelevant question. The Khans now, the Khans are there. Then, then you have had Dilip Kumar, you've had Madhubala, you've had Meena Kumari. It's gone on for years and years. So let's yeah. keep that question completely aside. Uh, uh, I want to bring in this little question that suppose her surname was not Wasim, but it was Jane. And, and as a Jane, at 18, she decided to renounce this life and take Diksha. Would we be debating this question here? Would there be a Twitter war going on? I don't think so. I think it's all this current atmosphere of Islamophobia which is in the air, which is driving all this. And I think it's rather sad because you're ignoring the, the, the stresses that this young woman is going through. I'll give you a couple of examples from tennis. Recent, uh, there's this Ashley Barty, the Australian world number one. She gave up tennis because she couldn't cope with the attention. She started playing cricket because cricket is a team game and she was happier there. Or Naomi Osaka, the mixed race Japanese. She said she's happy not being world number one because at her age she can't cope with that attention. So you see, it affects a lot of young people and especially young women suddenly find this attention and then they are scrutinized much more than a man, young man would be. So there is a huge stress. I, I, I think you make Let's an important point. Let's not underestimate that. I want to take that to Advaita. Advaita, is this, is, is this a sort of a reaction to this kind of Islamophobia? I, I did ask before you came on as well. If her name was Sunita Jain, would Twitter care? Would social media care? You know, social media is extremely intrusive. So I think they would care about anything and everything and everybody's personal lives, including those of us sitting on the panel. So I don't think, you know, you can kind of attribute that to any kind of phobia per se. Certainly, I mean, when it comes to khap panchayats and their ridiculous diktats, uh, they're under censure all the time and deservedly so. I think you have to examine these things. I think it's important to examine them without hiding behind political correctness because you've seen situations where Sanya Mirza has been trolled for wearing a skirt. Uh, you've seen situations where 
where wives of cricketers like uh, you know Irfan Pathan, Mohammad Shami have been trolled again uh, for the way they have dressed or the fact that they've displayed, so-called displayed, I use that with air quotes, their wives on a public platform. So these are the kind of you know uh, commentary that you have seen consistently emerging, including with what happened with Nusrat very recently. So I think be it whatever community, I think uh, whatever kind of uh, you know this sort of uh, putting women in their place, this sort of patriarchal, patriarchal attitude, which every religion actually can claim in different degrees, is something that as a society we need to examine so that people when they make their choices, uh, they're privy to them, it's their rights, but they're making them for the reasons that are best for them and not because they have been actually, bullied that's into a good situations. Point. And, and Sadi, I'll just take that to you as a last comment. Uh, you know, Adveta makes a good point. Uh, that, you know, w w you do have these voices that try to put pressure on women and it does happen across religions. But, you know, the recent example she's giving, whether it's about Zaira herself, what happened with Nusrat uh, of the TMC, etc. I mean, that there is a, tr a lot of pressure women in particular face. <coughs> Yes, that's true. In women in particular do face these issues. But uh, I would agree with Anil to, uh, to some extent that whenever the word Muslim or Islam comes in, it really generates a different kind of reaction and takes it to the other extreme. Uh, that, is, that does come into play. But again, as a, as a winding up last comment, I think that there could have been, you know, there could have been societal pressure. That's also true because it comes from, a, you know, Kashmir is a conservative uh, place. But whatever I'm sure she's doing is with, you know, ultimately her free choice. And like I said, I think her pa parents are, uh, you know, educated. They come from an educated background. They must be supporting her, counseling her. So it's really best to let this young teenager uh, be and find her own course and wish her well in whatever career she chooses to take and wish her success. I'm sure she'll make a success of wherever she goes. All right, here is wishing her all the best. Thank you very much to all of you for joining us on Left, Right and Centre. Tonight, we'll take a break. We'll be back with some cricket on the other side.